And let us all please be seated as Dave shares some words of tribute. He is the one I understand to be the favorite. <laughs> uh, this is going to be kind of tough um, because it was emotional writing it, so it's going to be really emotional giving it. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm David. I'm the oldest son. Um, the oldest, my siblings are my sister Lynn, uh, my brother Todd, uh, and the baby of the family, Shug, uh, Karen, uh, and of course my mother Carol. Um, First of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming here today, uh, not to mourn um, the passing of my dad, because uh, he'll be missed, um, but rather to celebrate a long life and uh, his passage to a better place. Uh, everybody knew my dad as a kind-hearted guy. Uh, he was a fun-loving guy with a great sense of humor, and uh, he always enjoyed a good joke. Um, he got along with everybody, uh, and it seems like everybody knew my dad, and people always told me uh, how great a guy my dad was. Trust me, it's not going to be too long. Um, I just have, everybody knew my dad from business and, you know, Kiwanis and stuff like that, but uh, I just want to share a couple of things about my dad. Um, he was a man that lived to be 88 years old. Uh, he was married to my mom this October. That will be 70 years. Um, and being 66 years old, and uh, up to a week ago, having both my parents still alive uh, is pretty rare and really pretty special. Um, he, f he raised four kids, which he told me many times. Um, how proud he was of us. Uh, he'd like to say, none of you were in jail and none of you were living in my basement. <laughs> so he enjoyed our successes. Um, he, enjoyed, he enjoyed our kids, uh, his grandchildren, of which there are seven living and one who preceded him in death. And then their kids, his great-grandchildren, of which there are currently three, and uh, within about the next three weeks, soon to be four. Um, Dad didn't usually volunteer a lot of information, uh, but when you asked him questions about his childhood or his time in the service or his career, um, he had some good he had some good some good stories and and shared his memories, some which were great and some which weren't so great. Um, but all those experiences made my dad uh, the guy he was. When you're a kid growing up, uh, you get so wrapped up in doing your own thing, uh, you don't really pay attention to the things your dad is interested in. He goes to work, uh, he hopefully buys you the things you tell him you think you need, uh, and you basically do your own thing uh, and just hope he stays out of the way. Um, uh, looking through boxes of pictures the last couple of days, do you, people remember pictures? Um, the last few days brought back Memories of a few things my dad really enjoyed, and uh, I'd like to share just a couple of those with you. Um, dad and a few of the guys he knew through business and some friends, they got together and purchased, a pro purchased some property up around Deer Creek, uh, Deer Brook, Wisconsin. Built the Deer Shack on Bluebird Lane and named themselves the Bluebird Sportsman's Club. Every deer season, my dad would grab his liquor case which I thought was pretty cool. He had room for two bottles of booze in there and mixing the, the mixing utensils and a shaker cup. I, it was just kind of really neat. Um, uh, two gallons of chili. He took his two gallons of chili, uh, his cooking utensils, and his snare drum, and uh, headed for the shack. Uh, I can't remember how many years my dad went deer hunting, but he never took a gun. Uh, in fact, I don't even know if dad owned a gun. <laughs> but... <laughs> But dad was the cam cook. Uh, and I did go up there one weekend during deer season just to, to check out you know, what it was all about. Uh, and I could see why he enjoyed it so much. Um, here, here was a bunch of guys 
sitting around at night, talking smart, uh, drinking, a couple of guys playing guitars and my dad on the drum, and the more they drank, the louder they sang. <laughs> and the next morning, my dad was up before the crack of dawn, making hot coffee so he could, and preparing a big breakfast for the whole crew before they could head out for a day of hunting. I don't remember those guys getting a lot of deers over the years, but they had a lot of good times. My dad wasn't a very athletic guy, but at the urging of my mom's uncle, he was a charter member of the Two Rivers Curling Club. Uh, he and his fellow founders bought an old mink farm on the south side of uh, Two Rivers. They bought some old ice making machines, some old cur some used curling stones, and started a curling club that started that existed for 25 years. Uh, he would curl a night or two during the week, and some weekends. And then every year, he would head out of town for a bonspiel, which is what a curling tournament is. And uh, I can still remember him heading out on Thursday night with his liquor case, his curling broom for a weekend of competition and, and some, guy, uh, some guy time. Uh, he would return late Sunday night, pretty wiped out. And when I got older and had a family of my own, and I'd go on long golf weekends with my buddies, I finally realized what those weekends were all about. <laughs> Another one of my dad's favorite pastimes was horse pulling contests. Both watching them and at times participating. And he was a hooker, but my mom said to, you know, explain that um, for those, of, those that don't know. Uh, so one Sunday I decided to go along with him um, to see what a horse pulling contest was all about. We came upon a small burg west of here, which was basically an intersection with uh, two bars and a church. But there were cars and, and uh, pickup trucks parked everywhere. And there in the middle of the field uh, was the horse pulling contest. And guys with a team of two horses um, hooking, hooking their horses to a sled with weights on and, and, and pulling them. And uh, my dad really explained what, telling me, I mean, he really got into telling me what horse, horse watching was, horse pulling was all about, the lead horse of the team, the setting of the hook, the virtues or the scruples of the guys that own these horses. I mean, he had the whole inside scoop. And as the day wore on, I, I, I found myself getting more and more into horse pulling. Um, and he actually, uh, every year he would travel to the National Horse Pulling Contest uh, in Detroit, Michigan with his buddies and his fellow team horse pulling members. And I was out of the house by then, but I assume he took that liquor case. Um, <laughs> so last, lastly, as most people in this area, my dad was a, a huge Packer fan. So back in 2011 when the Packers were expanding Lab Lambo, um, my wife and I bought my dad some Packer stock for Christmas. Uh, and dad, dad framed that and he hung it in the hallway of our family home. Uh, I think he may have taken down the picture of his kids to put that up there, but I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, so over the years, my boys and I enjoyed ribbing my dad uh, for bad, cho bad draft choices or bad personnel changes. We, we always said, yeah, you're management now, Don. You know, it's like, thanks a lot. Um, but every Sunday, my dad would put on his Packer shirt, his Packer watch, sit in his recliner on his Packer blanket, and watch the game. And uh, hopefully they got some good TV reception up there in habit. I'm wrapping this up now. So, uh, Dad had numerous ailments over the last decade or so of his, of his life. Uh, and even though the, some of those illnesses and the treatment resulted in constant pain, my dad never really complained, or, or not much. And I know he was frustrated as his ability to get around continued to get worse, and he depended more and more on, on my mom for his daily care, but he hung in there. And uh, during the last several years, he had several falls, which resulted in hospitalization. So I'd fly up here. I live in Florida. I'd fly up here to, to see him. And when I asked him how he was doing, he would always say to me, a guy shouldn't live to be this old if this is how it's going to be. Uh, 
he'd, he'd always say, and he's, I know everybody's heard him say it in my family, he said, you know, if the elevator, if the elevator doors open, and I know it's going up, I'm ready to get on. So I know my dad put up with that pain for the love and the benefit of his wife and his family for a long time. So about three months ago, things got to the point where my mom could no longer care for my dad at home. And I know it's hard to believe, but my mom is 92, right? 92? And he was admitted into the Manitowoc Health and Rehabilitation where my mom visited and sat with him every day, uh, still caring for my dad. And uh, my, my siblings would take turns, sometimes a couple of them, visiting my dad numerous times a week as well. And uh, those last months our family spent together with dad was a lot of family quality time. And uh, as we watched my dad decline, and this was time with my dad we were very happy to have, and we probably spent more time with dad in the last three months than we did maybe for the last three years. So last Saturday, those elevator doors opened. My dad took a look inside. He saw what he liked, and he hopped on. And I'm sure that elevator went straight up. So dad, we love you. We miss you. And rest in peace. Thank you. Let us pray. O oh God, who have set a limit to this present life so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy you may command the name of your servant Don to be inscribed in the book of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated once again as we listen now to the word of God. Megan will share our first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On the mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all people. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God to whom we look to save us. This is a Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord.
Ian will now share a second meeting. This, this is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, no one lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he may be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then do you judge your brother or you? Why do you look down on your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an accounting of himself to God, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said to his disciples, will be like a man going on a journey who summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five coins, to another two, to a third one each according to his ability. Then he set forth on his journey. The servant who had received the five promptly went to invest them and gained five more. In the same manner, the servant who had received the two coins gained two more. But the servant had, who had received one went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long period of time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five coins came forward, bringing an additional five. Master, he said, you gave me five coins. Behold, I have gained five more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Since you have been faithful in small matters, I will give you much greater responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Next, the one who had received the two also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two coins. Behold, I have gained two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Since you have been faithful in small matters, I will give you much greater responsibilities. Come, Share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one coin came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. Therefore, out of fear, I went off and hid your coin in the ground. Behold, I give it back to you. His master replied, You lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered. 
Then you should have deposited the money with the bankers, and on return I would have gotten it back with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he does have will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. A strange gospel, perhaps, for a funeral, but it just seemed appropriate for a banker to uh, have the parable of the coins, the parable of the talents, the parable of the drachmas, however it's translated. And, uh, you know, the whole point of the parable, of course, is Jesus saying to the audience, invest wisely, live with a certain amount of risk. The worst thing you can do is to do nothing and let me help. And of course, the parable has nothing to do with coins, really. It's an analogy about life. In what do I invest? family, service? What will give me a reward from how I spend my life, how I spend my time? Don lived a full and happy life. He was a man who was very much about service. The Kiwanis, the Korean War, the KCs. He invested in life and, li and in service. He was willing to take a risk, to take a risk in love. 70 years, my goodness. I can't imagine. He got married a year after he graduated from high school and shortly after he went into the service to serve in the Korean War. Within a year and a half, to graduate, get married, and go off to a war? I can't imagine the variety of emotions his parents must have felt. Oh my goodness, talking about risking love. And he let God help. Don was not a street corner evangelist, but very quietly and yet very assuredly, he let God in to his life. God was not on the back burner. He lived his faith in being kind and generous and fun. Fun comes from inner peace. People who are fun are generally at peace within from loving others. And he was fun. Somebody in the uh, visitation this morning said, oh, I got to tell you a joke that uh, one of Don's favorite jokes. He said, uh, did you ever notice that people who go deep sea diving always go off the side of the boat back first? And he said, you know why that is? And the person said, no, not really. And he said, well, because if they went forward, they'd fall into the boat. <laughs> One of his favorite little jokes. And everybody was just telling stories that, that Don told over and over again the inner peace that comes from loving and serving and believing. So Don, in many ways, took this parable to heart and believed that doing nothing is the worst. And he did something. He maybe won't end up on the cover of People magazine, 
But he did make a difference in many lives. He truly did. And his inspiration lives on. But only to the degree where we pick up where he left off. Will I invest wisely in that which brings me real happiness? Will I invest my time, my resources, my abilities in that which brings me real happiness? Do I risk loving even though I may get hurt? even though it may cost? Do I let God help me? Or do I keep God at a distance? Don, inspire us from your place in the kingdom. God, help us to listen to that inspiration and act on it. Let us all stand now as Vivian shares with us the prayers of the faithful. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Don, who lived a Christian life and cared for others in every capacity. May he be held forever in God's loving embrace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Don, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, may he now be admitted to the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Don, who through baptism received the light of Christ, may the darkness of death now be dispelled as he passes to eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who love Don and grieve his passing, may we feel God's healing power and comfort one another in this time of pain and loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all assembled here in loving memory of dawn, help us, Lord, to be faithful to you, so that we may someday be united with you in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Listen to these prayers, loving God, and all the prayers that surface in our hearts this day. As you welcome Don into your warm embrace, reach out and touch us with the confidence that each of us needs in your promise that life is forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated as we continue with our Eucharist. Michael and Barrett will uh, represent us in bringing the bread and wine to the altar.
Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Don, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Don, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Bring him and all who have died into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share that gift and grace with those around us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Don may come to the eternal table of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Immediately after our prayers here in church, we will go in procession of the cemetery for military rites and the rite of committal. Following that, we will all uh, meet at Mahout's for lunch. If uh, you choose to not come to the cemetery, no, you can go right to uh, Mahout and wait for us there. Before we do that, we take leave of our friend. There is sadness in parting, no matter the age or the circumstance of death. But we take comfort in the word of God that has been shared in the Eucharist that we have celebrated and in all the wonderful memories that bind us together as family and friends today. We send them forth with the assurance of our prayers and of our promise to do all that we can to invest fully in the life that God shares with us. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend the soul of Don, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, he lives forever. Forgive any sins he may have committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting rest. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the angels take you into paradise. May the martyrs escort you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go then and take our brother to his place of rest. <laughs> 